things, it will be in pretty plain view. So uh, just here's a quick introduction. Welcome to the Boone County Extension Office if you haven't been here before. Uh, this is the Enrichment Center, so normally we don't use the loom tube for this, but this one only worked out pretty perfect for the suit. We've got nice free flow and everything else. Uh, but I'm Michelle Simon, I'm the ag agent here. And Dr. Coleman is one of the uh, equine specialists at UK. And Dr. Light is in the complimentary back here in Alexandria, Kentucky. And this is Jimmy Walton. He's got a chica with us today, so he'll be our, our day of way, right? Our, yeah. <laughs> our demonstration. So uh, if you're joining us online, if you have questions, just put them in the chat box, and I can answer those as we go. And then in person, too, if you guys have questions, just uh, raise me and get somebody's attention and go ahead and ask it as we're going. So this is the beauty of having a small crowd. We can have everything one-on-one -on -one and ask all the questions you want. So uh, we've got great resources here today, so I'm pretty good with all this stuff. So I hope you guys are, too. Uh, I guess we can jump on in. I'm going to give you the headset here.
Well, I think that you recommend that people do you get the, the position to start with you like two. So I usually give people quite a high buy. You can just stop it with a couple. It doesn't slide forward and it doesn't slide back. So this is a nice position to start. So just real quick, a couple of things. We're going to violate the wooden spirit here. We already one finger, so this is not going to be acceptable this way. Also, two, see the spreading of the salad back here, a little closer to the horse and compass. So that's the nice part also. So if you're going to look at a salad like this, all these things are important to me to make any other detail in the salad. So again, this would not be a great fit of the glitters and crickets inside of this puzzle. That was just nice and solid and straight. So that part is fine. But here again, a little bit of problem here. And also, we were up against the force of shield of the rain by that three inches here. So again, this would not be a good salad for this horse. The other thing I need to say about this too is this may be a wonderful salad for the next couple of weeks to try it on. Doesn't mean it's been one of the salads at all, but for this particular horse, this is going to be good. <laughs> Try this other Western salad here first. So 
this one here is a little better fit, and this would probably work out to him going to the bottom. We've got a much brighter gullet here in the saddle, so it's not going to paint on the spine and get the saddle again. Yeah. Let me repeat the yes. question too. Oh, okay, okay. So if this were a Western saddle, would this be too high on him? Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, he's, he has pretty good clearance from the saddle too. There. So I think that would be okay. okay. Yeah. The other thing you want a Western saddle too, you give about two inches of leather the anterior to the end of the tree. So you have just a little bit of leather. Put the back on. So, um, this saddle, here's where the tree ends, but you've got about two inches of another in front of the tree. Okay. You can usually feel it if you've got a saddle upside down, you can go more deeply in the tree ends and the leather is. So the, the question becomes then, how do we find the sound that's going to go to the source? And so there's, there's kind of an easy way we can figure that out. And I'll show you a technical way and then a, a simple way to do it at home. It's called a saddle tech saddle gauge. Jesus who mirrored the horse's body. So he starts right behind the shoulder blade. And this is blade here every four inches. So if you're going to look for an English saddle, you don't need the last blade on the, the gauge. So look, everything fits. And what you do then, is you take a saddle, And this is now inside the, inside the saddle. So the beauty of this is, if you have a saddle that doesn't fit in an English saddle, you can mark off where it doesn't, where the trees or the uh, panels don't fit, and you have every flock boots at the time. So, uh, Western saddles, you can't do that. So the other way to do this, is you're going to have to go out and look for a saddle. You can mimic the blades of the saddle gauge with the touch of the ruler. You start at the edge of this shoulder blade. You just mold that. So you mold this to the this position. You take this, this flexible ruler. Take and cut this out. And then this, this cut out section here. Sound just like the blade of the cell can. You go four inches behind that. You get another tracing. This flexible rule is a little more flexible than they usually are. You can see the difference in these two tracings. And so here again, this would be the first 
uh, blade at the gauge. This would be the, the one you'd put inside the saddle, and this would be the one four inches behind that. And nowadays, you can take pictures of your phone so you know where they where they've gone. So here's. The other important one to do here is this one. So this is a very simple but effective way of finding a saddle that's going to fit. So you have four of these little cutout parts here that you would set inside a saddle. To see how it fits. It works for English saddles as well as Western saddles. So the other thing too, if you're going to buy a used saddle, it's important to check the saddle to be sure it's worth buying. Uh, you need to be sure the saddle tree is straight and a few things. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do it. Over. So this can be done one of two ways. I like to do it. Just setting the saddle up on end and looking at the saddle and see if it's symmetrical from the candle to the palm. And this, this saddle is. Okay. I'm going to take the saddle and push it to flex it to be sure the tree isn't broke. Both ways. Then the other thing when any saddles, you want to check where the stirrup bars are mounted to be sure they're symmetrical. And to find the saddle symmetrical. It's the same thing holds true for the Western saddles also. These are easier to do because they're much lighter, but we'll do the Western saddle and Western saddle also. So Western saddles can get the trees broken also. So just push it against yourself or like this. Also check to be sure the candle there's some cracked across here by pushing down. Side sideways. That's an unnecessary step. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
Flex. Okay, flex trees. Okay, so flex trees and treeless saddles. Uh, everybody kind of has an opinion about those things. Um, my feeling is that I like a tree that has a solid tree, a saddle that has a solid tree that fits. Um, some horses do really, really well with a flex tree or treeless. Uh, they do much better than they do with a tree saddle. So I usually need that as a horse. But my personal preference is a solid tree. It seems like a lot of the horses with high withers may be a little better. Uh, sometimes the horses that have no withers at all, there's not much stability. Um, the other thing, too, we can talk a little bit about saddle pads, too, before I forget the job we have. Um, so, my feeling about saddle pads is the least. And um, there's a lot of different types of pants that's all about with me. So one of the things I mentioned right off the bat is on a side of a pant like this, it's really important that you get a stitch and go around. If the top of the pad is not a stitch to the bottom of the pad, it's not uncommon when you're riding for that to override itself and cause a wrinkle or twinkle in the pad. And to make the horse sore when it's happening. So, one of the comment I make about a pad like this it is a withers relief here this pad. Okay? So, what I always tell people about a pad like this if you are wearing a little sock, you can cut a dime or a quarter size hole out of the heel of your sock and walk around in it all day. But at the end of the day, is you're going to know what that stop was. So when you have a cutout like this, the support that the cutout is up high enough, so it's not putting pressure on the side of the horse. This is land. But some of the cutouts get way down here, and so the side of the saddle is up against this gap here, so you get the same type of pressure. This side will get up so it's so around, so there's no moving between the top and bottom. So this, this pad here, uh, you're going to have a little bit of that same type thing on the bottom of this. So I had, my own preference would be a pad that doesn't have the position here. So this is all I wanted to set it together. Uh, they make the clothing pads too sometimes where there's a big bowl on the top. And if that doesn't stick you out perfectly, it's going to be some of the pressure. Yes. This is ideal in my estimation. The other thing too is I get questions about the sweat patterns on the uh, south pads. And so if you look for an even sweat pattern all the the saddle pad, you get set up. There's two conditions where you don't get an even sweat pattern. One is if there's no contact. The tree has a gap in it which not supporting then you'll have a like, uh, spot here. The other thing, too, is some older horses that have pants and pushed elements over the year, the sweat glands or the are damaged, they won't sweat there. So that's something that's to be considered. It doesn't mean the saddle may not fit, it means the horse's sweat glands are damaged beyond their ability to sweat. But that doesn't have much to the horse, but it's something more than their own. So then, are you able to tell by the sweat marks that you can?
We did have a question online. It says, how do you keep a saddle from slipping right and left? I'll bring it in close to you. Make sure you speak. I think it's tough with the cars in the background, so let's just speak up and you should be good. So, so if it's an English saddle, the, the panels underneath may not be symmetrical. That's one of the ways. The other thing, too, if there's a lot of people put so much padding on the horse that you can't quite tighten the saddle down enough to keep it from slipping. So uh, if there's two pads being used, I try to go from to just one. Uh, also, to the stirrup bars may not be mounted evenly. The stirrups may not be the stirrup leathers may be in a different hole, or if they're in the same number of hole, they may have stretched a bit. So those those are the same the types of things that will make it slip. Sometimes too, the whole the horse's entire barrel may be shifted left to right. Stuff that way also. Okay. No other questions on this? She said thank you. <laughs> uh, can you give us some suggestions on how to measure for girth size? Like what size do you need? Know, oh. Okay, so uh, if you want this, the girth, with the girth fast, and you want it up right above the horse's elbow side here, okay. Okay. on both sides. So you, if you have it too low, it, the horse moves, it's going to interfere with this elbow. So up in here is typically a good, a good spot. How many spaces should it be between the front legs and the stirrups on the center? Oh, okay. So you want to, if you can see here, this little dip right here. Mm -hmm. So you kind of go by that. They're, 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 they're adverse that, that don't come straight down and come at an angle or they're in a kind of a shape of an L. Those things can be used also, as long as everything else is okay. And, and what, what if you have a horse that's more muscular on one side than the other? Would you, do you, add, do you, do you adjust the saddle for the less muscular side or do you adjust the saddle evenly and hope to build up the muscle? Or it, 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 yeah, well, you want to have enough space on the shy side for the horse to build muscle. And so typically horses are uh, not dependent or radiated and that's what you, you account for the shoulders being uh, bigger or higher than the other. And so what you try to do then is do exercise to build up the slight side. Yeah. Typically if you worked a horse that had a walk and trot in a small circle the inside leg will build more than the outside leg if you do it a fair bit. You want to go that direction two or three times more than to go the other direction. Okay. So if you want to go, so if the right side is not as built up, you want to go to the right and work it. Precisely. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that works for a walk and trot, it also works for canter too, but on the canter you'll, you'll, you'll also develop the opposite. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> so that one's really sensitive for whatever yeah. reason. <laughs>
we bred horses to be different and more as we said, you know, we want them to work harder, longer, do do a lot more things than probably what we had even 20 years ago. Uh, so there's, there's probably been some some need to, to understand how everything fits. Uh, but I think it, it counts for everything, all of our tactics. And I think it also becomes something that's really challenging when you go to try and buy it. And, and certainly, the situation we've been in lately where we don't get to go shopping, there's no progress, no shopping, 70% of the shopping closed, <laughs> is really causing me a tremendous amount of grief. I'd love to go to the all right, all right, don't go to the it's miss quite a fair too. I mean, I my shopping is just I van truck and I don't even have a horse, so why do I need to shop? But by the same token, when you can go and actually look at the stuff and, and probably have a much better feel for what it is you need and what you're looking for, and when you read a lot of the information that's out there now, they talk about you know, what to buy uh, and some of the the. Uh, Online companies are doing a better job of, of giving you some advice on how to pick what it is you need. Uh, I like the one I was reading it recently from my class that, that Dover has. They said, well, if you need to buy a new bridle, borrow the one you like from your friend and see if it fits your horse, and then buy one like that. It's like, what if I don't like what my friend has? Uh, then what do I do? Or what if my friend won't lend it to me because we can't get together because of so there, there are some things that I think you can think about and consider. This thing is really hard to get it to stay where it wants to, uh, or where I want it to do. But I think when you get it home or when you when you start, uh, there are some things that you can do in your purchases that might help a little bit. Um, certainly getting, you know, I didn't bring any halters, but you know, trying to get the right size halter for the example. It's somewhere that if you get the rope off, that they all fit. No, they don't. No, they don't. Uh, you might be able to adjust the knots if you're clever enough, but no, they don't. Uh, the nylon ones don't fit. And, and the sizes depends on what part of the industry you're in. I mean, if you're a Western person, the cop size means absolutely nothing. We either have horses or, or in some cases, it'll be a, a quarter horse halter or an Arabian halter. Well, that doesn't tell me very much. Uh, so it is it is a challenge. And the same when we go to buy bridles. Uh, what size, and if you're buying English bridles, they can be a real challenge. But probably the biggest thing that, that I see is when people buy bits, and how big should it be? Uh, it depends. I actually have used this. It's a bit gauge. Can you move your mic to the front, Dr. Coleman? Do you care? To the speaker itself. You can move it to your front. You can put that around your neck. Sometimes and then yeah, that's worth it. Right? All right. Where do you want me to put this? In your front pocket. That would be possible. Sure, as long as it doesn't start squealing. If it squeals, it's Michelle's fault. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> and this is Max. He goes to class with me uh, around campus. I get lots of really strange looks, but that's okay. But you know, you just put it in and measure it and then look at the other side and it'll give you an idea about how big the mouthpiece needs to be. Now, the, the critical thing is that it tells you how wide it needs to be. It's very difficult to figure out how round it or how wide it needs to be. And I think a lot of times when we'll have, you know, bits that have a little more roundness to it, uh, what does that, what are we told about that? Well, if you have a rounder, wider, larger mouthpiece, it distributes the pressure over a greater surface area, and it is less harsh on the horse. Okay, that only works if it actually fits. If it's too big for his mouth, it will be harsh, it will be uncomfortable, and what's he going to do? He's going to be like Max, he's going to have his mouth open, and we don't want that. Now, if you're a western rider and he has his mouth open, what do you do about that? get a smaller bit. If you're an English rider, and this is going to sound really horrible, but I've seen too many do this, you get a new cabison. And my favorite one is you get a crank nose band. 
quiet because you can crank it down. You can make him close to smell, maybe, maybe, or you can add things to it. So I think we've got to be careful with things like that. Uh, if you're using a loose ring snaffle or a loose ring, yeah, a loose ring snaffle, uh, you probably want to have enough space. <laughs> Not quite a finger's width on the corners. If you have really big fingers, maybe use your pinky. Uh, and it's more important to have a little more clearance on this ring bit than it is on this one. Because this moves. And so there is an opportunity for the cheek to get in here. And that hurts. So they tell me, I, I'm not going to try it, but I'm going to believe them. And it also will cause some, some discomfort for the horse. So there are a little bit of things like that that when they talk to you about how wide does it need to be? It's going to be a little bit different depending on, from a snaffle perspective, uh, how you, you would like that. Uh, if you have a shank bit, again, there's a couple of things with shank bits, and I can't put the one on. It was interesting when I bought Max, uh, the ad said you can put any kind of bit in this horse's mouth. I should have had the veterinarian look at it before I bought them. Check out his mouth. <laughs> Because guess what? You can't. <laughs> a snaffle like this, uh, a straight bar, that'll fit. Nothing else will. Anything with a port, he doesn't have enough mouth. Or it ends up as hanging down here, and I'm afraid to show that to my students because then they're going to think that's how. And it's like, no, 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 that's not. And, and I've changed some bits on him, but it's a little tough because. Easier on him than our star saddle fitting horse because his ears don't bend. So you, you got to work pretty hard to change bridles. But I don't like bridles with snaps on them, except for Max, uh, because then I can make adjustments a little easier. And don't give me too much grief. Yes, I know I'm going to do this on the wrong side. <clears throat> but because it doesn't have a brown bed, I so if you did with this one, and all of a sudden you see that as far as fitting the bridle and the bit, it's going to be different. And why is that? Right. So that leads me to my first question. Why are rings different sizes? Because they can be. Okay. <laughs> um, this actually is probably a pony bit. So it's smaller for what it, its intended purpose is. Um, it also could potentially be for a double bridle on a warm blood horse. Uh, they'll, they'll go with a little bit bigger ring if we had saddlebred horses. If you look on their double bridle, their Bermuda bits tend to have a smaller ring. Part of that is just to reduce how much is there and it affects the picture. But certainly. I mean, I understand the difference between the D and the egg button and the loose ring, but the size. There is a little bit of a mechanical advantage uh, depending on the size because, if, particularly on ring snaffles, because you can get, there are some out there that are five inch. They're, I mean, they're huge. And so when you it will give you more lateral pressure on the side of the horse's face. It still moves a little bit, but it, that, that's why you might go with a bigger ring is because you want a little more pressure on the side. Um, generally, they're you know, the three to four inch. And in a lot of disciplines, they'll actually tell you how big the ring can be. It, it can't be too small and it can't be too big. And they will actually, depending on the, the, the discipline, they will tell you what that has to be. And so you just, but it's a really good question. So you just measure them. And one of the things that, that I, and I didn't bring it, I'm trying not to wander around too much, Michelle. Oh, you're fine. Uh, okay. The last time they had, we did something like this, they put a square on the box and said, don't get out of your box. <laughs> it was here. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. That's okay. It'll go away in the rain. But so you can measure it. You can also measure the, you know, measure, measure the bit. Um, 
I probably would go with just kind of that, that idea of just a little bit extra, um, just so there is some, some give or take. I don't want it really, really tight. Uh, and make my choice. So, I mean, this one's a bigger ring. That's a bigger ring. It's a pretty big ring. It's actually been through the war. Yeah. Um, it's no longer circular. So if, like our saddle, saddle being symmetrical, this one is, this is symmetrical, this is old. Uh, I wonder, that must have been a great ride. Wow. This is a pretty stout fit. Yeah. So you can think about things like that. The other thing, when we start to look at bridles, or before we go to that, um, when we're looking at, at curb bridles and, and curb bits or leverage bits, not only are we worried about how it fits here, you want to figure out how it fits here. And we're starting to see a lot of more of the, the better quality bits. These are going to be turned out to give the horse space. I actually got this bit, and I was riding in it, and was not happy. I don't think my horse was happy, uh, and got really looking at it. And I was like, "These are too tight." So I actually went to Congress, and I went to one of the bit places, and said, "I need one." And I took this with me, and he said, "Well, I can show you how to fix that." I said, "Really?" He said, "You don't need to buy a new bit; just fix that one." I'm like, "Well, how do I do that?" He said. Get yourself a dowel rod, stick it in there, it's got to be pretty tight. Clamp on this and bend it. I said, but bend it symmetrically. It's like, yeah, I'm not that handy. I'm not that handy. I, I did a pretty good job, but I also bought a replacement just in case I messed up because I wanted to have one that would work. But that, and, and you can easily, if, if your bits get pushed in, some of the less quality bits will will go that way and just put it on the bumper of your truck and bend it. Um, and some of the ones are so soft all of us can do it. But that becomes a really important thing and it, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, I think it matters more on a bit like this that has a lot of purchase so there's a lot of distance here so it's going to be up higher on its face so it, it needs more room. And it's going to wrap through here unless I can pop it out. So I like them to, that they're opened up like that versus this one. Very small purchase. It's still tipped out. The other nice thing is a, a handy thing just in case you're going too fast when you're putting your bridles back together after you've cleaned them. It's easy to know with ones that are swiveled like this, the tops have to point out. So you know which way to put the bridle on your bed. And you can laugh at me about that, but I will promise you that there are people out there that need that little reminder that when they're hurrying, to make sure things go where they're supposed to. And certainly, as we add more rain, or we have more shake, or more purchase, how it's going to affect our, our bridle. And so when you're looking at bridles, what bit you use, and, and it's a lot like we heard with the saddles. So when those stirrup leathers stretch, things change. Well, bridles will stretch. And, and so how it actually fits and how you want it to fit. I don't know if we should try putting a real bridle on the rod. I know I brought one that has the potential to work. This one. I want one that comes apart easy. And the fit won't be perfect because he's plastic. And things don't bend quite the way they're supposed to. Some of the things aren't as easily done. Has anybody ever had a horse that that's why you didn't put the bridle on? <laughs> and then I start looking at how would that ground piece come to across the back of your ears? How tight is that brow band? Yep, I want this to be. Not uh, too high. I don't want this doing this because it's so short. And a lot of times we don't look at that. You know, I want enough. I don't want it so floppy that this is going this way, but I, I like it to, to fit a little bit and reasonably tight. And if this is probably more just me, and this one doesn't fit very well, I don't think I can get the cat. 
have so much quite where it needs to be pretty close. You can be up a tiny bit. I use my thumb as a fat finger, and then I'm only one finger below. And that is not bad. It could be up just a tiny bit more than that. I want my throat latch. I have to remember this from my English side of the industry to do up the throat latch. Because you'll notice on my bridle, I don't have to worry. I'll use <laughs> one less thing for me to remember to do up. But so I'm going to have this on. Uh, there's lots of this bait and discussion. How many wrinkles should we have on the corners? Absolutely. I think some like a little tighter fitting bit, and some don't want. I don't think they want anything out of their mouths. But well, they don't want it down here, so it's banging right. into their teeth. But uh, zero, one, uh, and actually, there's even some suggestions. So two soft wrinkles on a snaffle, one wrinkle on something like a pelum. I ride my curb bits with one wrinkle. I ride one horse with no wrinkles. He likes to kind of carry it, and. Makes him happy. When he's happy, the ride is really nice. Then I'm happy, so we deal with that. Uh, he's really thick, so this throat latch is, would be considered to be kind of too tight. It's almost three fingers. It could be four. Again, not sloppy. Tighten up so the reason it's there is that inadvertently this bridle doesn't come off. Uh, If you pull hard enough, even with four finger, with a two finger throat latch, but certainly a four finger throat latch, if you pull on it, it will come off. Uh, and there's enough things on Facebook to show us that that is absolutely true. There was a really good one where they pulled it off, the massage horse for a whip check, and uh, left the reins around his neck and pulled the bridle off over his head, and away he went. Good news was he didn't get tangled in the bridle because the reins kept it up out of the way. It was a mess. And, and nothing had been undone. The other thing we talk about is how tight should this be? You will see in lots of places they will show you this way. This is not how you do it. This is not where you check for tightness. You check for tightness here. And it's two fingers sideways. Or you can buy this. Handy dandy plastic gizmo from uh, somebody. Uh, the International Society of Transportation Science. I think they're like 20 bucks. I got mine for free. Uh, and so you get a check. It's like, really? People don't have two fingers? We got a check. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being very cynical, but it's like, but it's something that you need to do as riders. Every time we put the bridle, every time you need to check, and you can say, "But I always put it in the same hole. I don't care." Check. Uh, if you're using this and you've never adjusted anything, you need to check this for two fingers every time. And maybe you've got a horse in uh, a finger and a half would be better because one of the things. If you still have a crown piece that's coming forward, so my first go to is the brow band being two times. What else do you look for for it to give it a okay. oh, just Some, something with hands or just not all just be the board. So then what you need to do, and I need to tell you this. To spend all this, but now that we have these new anatomical bridles, so there's actually bridles out there. And this is changed. Yeah. So this actually sculptured. So that right. it comes back. I'd actually probably go go to the saddler, go to a leather maker, and get him to make me a different robin first. Just get it. If you think it's too tight, just get it. Get them to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, and then find out what size it is, and then you can. Most of the good tap stores sell parts. Right. Or if you have, like, some of us more than one bridle, steal from your neighbor. Yeah. Borrow your neighbor's bridle and only give them back 
But that's, that still is the ultimate. But yeah, I, I would fix my broadband first because that's going to be the most inexpensive and probably the most reasonable fix when you think about it. Um, and have, it's like so many things, have, lots of, have some parts. Have some parts. But if it's not the broadband, the broadband or I start looking at how my cheap pieces and, and that's another question I have is we're you know I've heard so much about where the buckle should be. The buckle shouldn't be here, it shouldn't be there, it should be in that close to the eye, it should be rest on something there. Is there some place where the buckle they, they like them to be down lower than on this one? So these cheap pieces are too long or too long. Actually, this Brian doesn't fit this one, so to be perfectly so honest. The buckles, then, if you, if it's I like my buckles down. Down that down way? Here. Yeah. And I have, according to my family, a really bad problem. My buckles have to be equal. Okay. Both that's sides. A that's a so you have your bridle customized then because it's hard to find your bridle. Exactly. The buckles that low. Your soft bridle as well as the western bridle? Yep. I want my buckles, and, and I actually, so, this is, I mean, I ride both of these, different different horses, but I ride both of these, they're both buckle bridles, and I have them set. The other thing that I do on my bridles, and I think, and it doesn't matter if it's a western bridle or an English bridle, uh, I always have these set before I put them on one hole lower than they're supposed to be. So it actually does hang down here and he plays with it and then I adjust it to the wrinkle or wrinkle and a half that I want because then it's loose enough and certainly with this one it's really easy. This is a, this ear piece moves. I don't have to move his ear very much to get the bottle on. So I think it's and it's purely my opinion. I've never asked the horse. I don't know if he cares or not. Uh, but it seems to be easier to bridle him. The other thing I do is that I undo the buckle one hole before I take it off. And I let, as I'm taking it off, he's going to play with it. And he spits it out. I never have to worry about ever pulling it well, except for one horse. He likes to hold on to it and suck on it for a while. I don't know what his issue is. But he will hold it. But then if you just patiently just let your hand come down, he'll drop it out of his mouth and there's never a fight. And, and I found since I started doing that, and don't ask me where I heard about it, because it just, somebody said, have you ever heard about doing this? I was like, no, but I'm going to try it. And, and it works really well. Plus the other thing that it probably helps with me more than, you know, if you're at a, at a lesson facility, well, it could help at a lesson facility because each horse should have its own bridle. It's my stuff. So when I go to the barn, I take my stuff and put on my horse. And, but even when I've been at other things and, and we have a question team horses there, I get a little upset with the, the girls when they start riding them because they get a little aggressive. I mean, there's no need to be in a hurry. Quick hand on, he puts his head down. A good horse, once he knows particularly if what you're putting in his mouth is comfortable, and what you're doing with it is comfortable, he'll open his mouth for you. Lots of them will. I mean, there's the odd one. It'll be a little bit of a, an annoyance and kind of play games with you, but it's, they're really not being other than just playing games. They're sort of annoying, but I think you can do that sort of stuff. So I, I like it to have the other thing that, that I do as a suggestion, if you guess or not, uh, one of the other very important pieces of equipment that I have in my cleaning box, oh, it's actually a really handy, is my hole punch is readily available, and I make sure my holes are the right size, maybe a tiny bit bigger than the buckle. So I hate fighting with buckles. Well, if you think about it, as you're trying to do it up or undo it, and you're jerking on his face, and you're punching him in the side of the hand, and uh, then you wonder why He's doing this when you go to bottom, and it's like you're not making this fun, and it's supposed to be for both of us, not just him and for me. Uh, the other thing that we didn't bring, 
I cheated on this one. This will be easier for a lot of the cuts are still This is my favorite. My friendly neighborhood, Craig, knows me. So, if you're so proud of you, please. Can you follow me over there? Yeah. Kind of, but I <laughs> So here we go. Regular plane, Danny Nanny, Johnson, that we call I mean, Some of us, when we were growing up, this is what we had. There wasn't any of this other stuff. And then this is a crank nose band. So it has lower parts to it. So I have a mechanical advantage, not on this one, because it's cleaning. But I can really. Oh, I can. But you can also ride with that just as a regular cabson. Oh, not. yeah, you don't have to do it tight. No. no it just gives you the ability to do it. If you have, can. Mm -hmm. theoretically, because of the way it's padded, uh, when you do tighten it down, all of the padding should be in a place so that the horse has comfort. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the nicest thing about some of these new cabs or new bridles mm -hmm. is the fact they are padded. My question is, if they're padded and we're following the two finger rule, it shouldn't make any difference. And yet, what are we hearing and seeing across the industry is people are telling us that we have to do a whole lot more to make sure our horses are comfortable. Well, that tells me that somebody's putting stuff on it incorrectly. You know, they're asking it to do something that maybe uh, is more than what that horse should have. And I know I don't want to keep it, but if you look at some of the Western cabinets, especially the weight roll points, they're really nice. They have knots in them on the side. You can only do it up sometimes. You, you can get it tighter than a finger. You're doing them pretty. You know, you're working pretty hard at it. Most of them, they they are there to encourage the horse to know that it's not kind of thing. and that's what these are for too. Now this was added. This cabinet here's a, a fun fact. Um, you know why this cabinet was added? Wait a minute. I uh, uh, Stanley Mark Young. Because the traditional English Bible did not have a cabinet. So when they figured out that they needed to put Stanley Mark Young on, you gotta have a place to tie it to. And that's where this came. So this uh, probably not gonna add anything else to it, but this also has a flash nose band. Yeah, would you speak to the flash? Hmm? Would you speak to the flash? I'm going to get to that. Um, again, it helps to uh, keep the horse's mouth closed. It also helps to keep the bit up in his mouth because you put this underneath the bit uh, and it will hold it. Again, you got to watch how tight you get this and there's also lots of debate where should this buckle be and so Try to put it on max. So that bit is not quite the same. Make it really big and sort of fits. Uh, and it also doesn't fit in correctly. So I'm going to. Michelle's going to video this from the other side so nobody's going to see what I'm doing. It's kind of going to cheat. With these, what happens when they don't want to fit right? Um, I'm not boxing it up because it's one holster, and I didn't bring my whole bunch. So. But I want this to be just underneath. You actually set this higher than you do the regular one, just a little bit. Is that where you would put the buckle where you have the buckle there? 
So again, you gotta kind of work on your stuff to make sure that it, it's clean and supple and it will slide easier. I've also heard people that ride cross country with a certain kind of bit that if the horse isn't listening, you take the flash off and turn it into a curb strap and they tend to listen a little bit. <laughs>
signal for what you want the horse to do, either how to change its frame, change its speed, any of those. So that's typically what it's going to be, is for getting them to collect up and, and probably changing the speed, generally not for turning, because if we're neck reining, how do we turn horses for the neck rein? That's what you're outside. Isn't, there, isn't that the Charlie Brown thing? The essence of life? Inside rain, outside rain. So yeah, you put the you put the rain on his neck, but then you put your leg on him. Because the rain says there's another signal coming. Your leg comes on and then he then he goes away. And that takes a while. I mean, that takes a long time to get him to do that. It's, it doesn't happen overnight. Those are those are not uh, <clears throat> middle school kids, those are high school kids that do that really well. But because typically what you see is people will go to rain and they get their head way over here. So what's happening to this rain? It's pulling his nose this way. So which way is he going to go? Pulling this way because that's what you told him to do. So you know, lots of different things. Uh, fit is a real big deal. You know, somebody said, you know, what's comfortable for the horse? That's what you do. If you got a two wrinkle horse, you got a horse that likes to have a bigger bit, a horse that likes a heavier bit, a horse that likes a lighter bit, that's what you work with. And try to make sure that they're comfortable and that they're responding in the way that you want them to. And I do think that keeping stuff really clean really helps so that it works well for you. And I don't think I've been quite to the point where I've been cleaning my tack every day. It's quite don't quite have that much time in my life, but uh, I do wipe my stuff off here frequently, uh, and then I do clean it very frequently. I'm not, we don't have hockey night in Canada, so it doesn't get quite the clean that it used to, but it does get some. So, those are the things that, that fit. The last thing that, that I think fit counts for is you, and that's when you start to pick things like reins. What, what works, for, you know, what fits in your hand? Uh, if you look at any of the, the rain options, English rains are typically fairly consistent. They generally are a 5 8 inch rain. You can get them braided, lace, rubber, it was on and on and on. Uh, some of the rubber rains are a little, a little heavier. They tend to be closer to 3 quarters of an inch. Some of the old style hunter and fox hunter rains were probably closer to an inch. A lot of rain, but but a fairly uh, narrow cut to the to the leather, so you're you're holding wide but not thick. Uh, when you get into the western rain, start anywhere from a half to to three quarters of an inch will be the typical range. You can get some one inch ones. Uh, then you're holding a lot of leather with those. And, and what what do you like? You know, what feels the best for you? And I don't think it. There's not a standard that says thou shalt use this. You're the one that, that has to be comfortable with it. And you have to be able to hold on to it in the way that you need to hold on to it. Cropping um, rains can be really scary. And if you're like some of us, who have split rains. Dropping rain means it could be on the ground. And then you could be on the ground picking it up. Hopefully not. But, uh, so there's those sorts of things. But I think it's all. Fortunately, in some cases, it's trial and error. And as Doc says, you know, if you can get a saddle tree or if you can get some stuff that you can take home and try, make sure that it does fit. That would be, I don't know, maybe we need to have some pack stores where you can just bring your trailer to the parking lot. And we'll just go up, we'll fit it right then and there and send you home with what you need. Citric acid to clean mud. I was dropping it in 
buy the powdered citric acid on an Amazon, mix it with water, throw the bit in, leave it for a little while. If it's really rusty, I watch to see how much the bubbles are coming. And then when it quits bubbling, I take it out and I just clean it up with a toothbrush. And I think, so from as far as worrying about what we let you a bit, you brought it back. What, what's coming back for free? Uh, is it laden with strangled stuff? But I can, I can get around that. I clean. That's not that hard. Uh, and so I think that there would be, it would be nice if there was a way to, to do that because in a lot of cases, one ride doesn't work. One ride doesn't work because you might be having a good day or you might be having a bad day. And that's a good point. A lot of people will, but a lot of people in the horse industry will do that with just about everything. I like her saddle. I'm going to buy one. In fact, it doesn't fit you or the horse. The good point. Uh, I really like the feed that Michelle's feeding. I'm going to buy that. And I remember getting told that. I had somebody said, you know, so and so. That's the idea. I said, what are they feeding? Because, you know, he had a world champion last year. <laughs> yep, he did. Um, and, and I know the feed didn't have made all the difference in the world. Uh, the fact that he's a great horseman and it's a really good horse and a bunch of other stuff. It didn't help, it didn't hurt, but didn't didn't win the day. And I think we have to be careful with that. And, and don't be afraid to go ask somebody. You know, you're using that. Uh, there's one. Uh, put it on this is too much because this is really pretty. You know, they uh, we don't have a horse that we could wear this. You know, this correction. You have to know how these work and appreciate it and, and probably get some help if you've never ridden them before. Uh, they're a nice fit. They are a nice fit, but they will really, if you think about it, you know, it's really going to cl collapse on that tongue. I mean, if you're not careful, you, it may cause some distress, but then what's it going to do? Well, typically when they're uncomfortable, they want to leave. You see a lot of those horses that when they're really uncomfortable, particularly in some of the show horses, they either don't want to come in the arena or in some cases they don't want to go out. Or they want to go out at 100 miles an hour because I've had enough. And maybe if I can get out of here, you know, leave me alone. I, I don't know what's going through their mind, but you see a lot of that. So if you're going to look at something, I mean, ask somebody how it works. There is no shame. In asking for advice, none. I mean, it doesn't matter. You've been riding a long time. It's something new. Go ask somebody that uses it. How does it work for you? How do you make it work? Does it work? Because sometimes you might get that answer. Yeah, they're really good. I can't make it work on my horses. Okay, well, I'm not going to you know, buy one. Um, I do that all the time. I drive the gentleman where I ride. I'm pretty sure he's happy the days of the home of ride. <laughs> not like a six year old. Why? How does this work? Why didn't this work? What, what do I need to do differently? Um, I want the explanation. I, just, I want to know what the deal is. And tonight, learning about all this stuff with saddle fit is like amazing. Amazing. And even just little things that somebody asked about the different girths and the different cinches, and it's like what we have available to make our horses more comfortable is phenomenal. It's just deciding whether what do we need. Uh, the question how to measure to see how big your cinch and your girth is. What's interesting, how you measure for an English girth is different than how you measure for a western cinch. Not the same. Use the same paper, but, but the points, because of where you want it to, to end up in relationship to the elbow, is different. And, and I see a lot of times in the question about, you know, saddles, 
just look at side to side. Uh, there are some cinches that, that aren't balanced. I mean, I worry about my buckles on my bridle. I worry about the, the rings on my cinch, too. I want them to be as close to the same place as possible. And does it matter? I think so. What does it do? I don't know. But I, I, I really want the horse to be comfortable. But I don't want the horses, as is you know, commented, that when you go to do something with them, I don't want them running away or you know watching him drop his back because. Uh, and the saddle fit thing is really important. And we did a program, a research program, a number of years ago, and we were measuring hunter jumper horses for a, another activity, but we were at a hunter jumper show. And I would go to body condition to score the horses. And is she okay if I touch okay. So I go through my process. And I would come here and I could pinch their withers to see where the fat content was. And I was putting 16 and 17 head horses on their knees because their withers hurt so much. And it was like I'm um, about that mean. You would just, they would just step away. It's like, wow. And a lot of them had white hair. Lots of white hair. And I'm convinced. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's because there's not so my particular jumping horses. They're going to come down, and then you're going to come down, and that saddle stick just keep banging on them. And I was just amazed. I actually think, in, and not to pick sides, but I think in some cases, some of our Western horses, either they're not being worked as hard, but you see less uh, dedicated. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's not a place where they tend to be sore. There's other places, but not there. So um, I hope you've learned some stuff tonight that we've answered your questions or sent you home with more questions. That's okay. We may have answers if there's other things. I said, I know you said, what about some other things about this? If there's other, we can talk about that. Uh, other questions you might have, we'll answer. We'll try to answer anything. If I don't know the answer, I have another question about the Western sound. Yep. How far back? I mean, I know there's a lot of uh, extra leather or something like that. How far back is the Western sound? Like, how far back on the horse's back and that extra leather? What, what is the point you're looking at? Okay, and that applies to to all of the leather on that side? Yes. Okay. Even if the tree ends here and it's hurting here, it's here. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's still going to hurt. Sometimes I'm going to make a turn, a sharp turn, and then in here. So it's still going to be a problem. So you still want to yeah. forward to that? Okay. See down with the barrel saddles, a lot of them now have uh, changed the skirts. They're all rounded so that they're, they're not kept. Well, in the Arab saddles, Western saddles used to be like that, what they had a rounded skirt. Yep. And there's some that they're coming back with square skirts. Yeah. Kind of like we had pointy toe cowboy boots and then we had rounded toes. <laughs> and now we got square toes and now the rounded toes are coming well, I back. I thought the rounded toes were simply because they had a little shorter back and they wanted to keep on sitting down. There was just a fashion statement. No, it's probably you know, there's probably some anatomical reason for it. Every now and then we do things for the right reason. <laughs> and, and if you're worried about padding on one of your English bridles, you can buy those little pads. They're like a dollar. So if you want to give your horse a little bit more comfort, and actually, you know, if you think about it, particularly if you've got brown pieces, if you've got your cavalson slip pad. That's going to have different areas of pressure because the calcium is going to be narrower than the other. So putting a pad on that actually then balances up, probably makes it more comfortable. Well, the thing I never understood is why they put the calcium strap underneath the, uh, the crown piece. Because the crown piece is always, at least an inch or so bigger, yep. right? I don't know. Now, there are some rivals now, I see, that they make them where they lace them through um, the top of the ground. And there's lots. Just say because it's going to squeal. Okay. And, 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 and there's also some that um, they're now building the, the 
cavison piece actually into the cheek. Right? It, 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 it's actually right in here. There's been sewn in, and, and it'll actually have two sets of buckles. So you actually have to adjust it on both sides. There's some of those that are out. And then there's some of those new anatomical bridles that are out. There's the uh, Micklin and the Rambo. And there's those that, are, that now we're seeing where the throat match goes to a different place. Um, just a lot more, I think a lot more thought. I, uh, I have one that was given to me. I used it when you had um, uh, she got really bad allergies and she got a really bad lymph node infection. And the Becklin sat enough where the throat latch, my throat latch on my regular massage bottle was rubbing it while that throat latch changed. And then also the way the nose band sat, it wasn't irritating her nose as because I had to take my cap off. Oh, that's a good idea. So what happens when you drink eight glasses of water a day? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I ended up keeping it and keeping it working on it. And I, I was not a big fan of them. They think they were, I like the traditional type gear, but you know what? It makes her happy. And Can you show it? Yeah. So they did finally change that. One thing you can show in your size is the business plan. Right. I have one of those students. Yeah. My horse didn't care one way or the other. There's, and there's all kinds of business problems, but I, yeah, I have one too. I actually have a business problem made out of biopsy. Oh, yeah. I got the document book, I think. Mine is the doctor cook dog off because I can't afford a <laughs> But, it, but it, it is actually a doctor cook, but it's just made out of biopsy material instead of made out of leather. That's all. And, and did your horse have any. Oh, no, I just got it for class. My horse, you know, he doesn't like it, yeah. and it actually fits him pretty good. Yeah. One of the only bridles that have that fits him. <laughs> on the business, that's what yeah. we just want. Fitting about the same. Because okay. we were, we haven't tried one yet, but we're trying to get one. Of the yeah. You gotta get it up off this. You want to don't let it drop along the nasal bone because it's here. So you want it up high. So Lots of people really like them. I was surprised. I was not going to, I would have never bought them, but I stuck with it. I've looked for one, I just can't afford one. Well, I had a nice client that I took it care of, so she gave me one. <laughs> well, the vast majority of my stuff hangs on a wall until it's time to go to class or they come to Boone County, so. <laughs> Oh, you know, so it's lucky you have all that stuff to try. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I have one horse out at the barn that you know, UK horse that the question team has. And you can put anything on his head. He'll, he'll you put anything in his mouth and he'll just stand there. So he's my poster child. So there's a lot of times that people will say, well, the same horse has got all the different bridles on. It's like, yeah, he just, he'll just stand up there, pulls his ears up, take his picture. We actually measured his mouth and measured his mouth and took his picture by myself. Because he just stands and just smile for the camera. And, and what I'm hearing about the this is it's going to, other than getting the length correct, the actual width or gauge of the is, is pretty much what the horse is constituting. Yeah, and his anatomy, how big is his stuff, how much room has he got in his mouth. Yeah, and, well. And, and don't go with. There's, there's some people say, well, it's a, an Arabian, so it's going to be smaller mouth. There's some Arabians with a pretty big mouth. And don't have really big tongues. And I have a friend that ride, was riding one of uh, upper level massage horse, had a double bridle, had, you know, where'd he go? It's, you know, had a balloon every bit as big as this, and a bigger for a mouthpiece, had a good regular uh, way to put a curve in it. And that horse just went on the happy as can be, had a lot. Yeah. Was was not uncomfortable. And if you watch this horse work, his ears were always up. Uh, Pulse was closed, the face was happy. I see that there's a new app out now where you can actually you stand and watch your horse for two hours or two hours, two, two minutes. Uh, watch their face for two minutes, you can tell them if they're in there. And there's a thing you can get on your phone. So 
for people in Europe. I don't know about that yet. But I, I do think we often look at our horses. How do they act when you put the saddle on? How do they act when you do up the girth or the sand? You know, are, are they acting uncomfortable and you let them tell you something? Sometimes it's just because you're being annoying. Like they're a little bit like teenagers, but. Um, and sometimes what, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. It is. It is. But if it's day in, day out, maybe it wouldn't hurt to look. Uh, even as simple as look at your, at your saddle bag. How plain is it? You know, those of you that ride with those nice white ones, you, know, you just throw them in the washing machine and get them cleaned up. That hair pad. This is a little harder to clean. Not really. Let's use my stiff brush. Stiff brush vacuum cleaner too sometimes. Well, yeah, stiff brush it, <laughs> vacuum it, and then it always sits out after I ride, face up in the sun, until it, it dries out. And as I was telling them, I bought this saddle pad in 1975. It's a pretty good hat. So, there we have it. Do we have any questions, Michelle, in the chat room? None from here. None Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing the horse. I think we should thank our horse. Uh, yes. <laughs> Good job, Chico. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> all right. We should have treats. Well, thank you all for joining on.